This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. We're going to go through and now just touch upon vesting conditions in a bit more detail because it is actually something that we've we've already dealt with as we've worked through the previous examples on your equity settled and on your cash settled share based payments. A vesting condition is essentially a condition that needs to have been met by the end of the vesting period in order for those options or those cash settled share based payments to allow to be exercised. If the conditions aren't met at the end of the vesting period, then therefore the options or the cash settled share based payments will not vest and therefore nobody will be entitled to get the options or to get the cash. Now, when we're looking at vesting conditions, there are two types of vesting condition. We've got your non-market based vesting conditions and market based vesting conditions. Uh, we've actually already looked at your non-market based vesting conditions. It is essentially a criteria that is set with regards to the vesting of the option that is not related to the value of the share. OK, nothing related at all to, if you like, uh, the price of your share. That's the market, isn't it? So here, things that we're going and speaking about here, the one that we've looked about already is whereby an employee has to remain with the business for that vesting period. So in all of the examples we've looked at so far, I think the employee had to be there, was it for three years? However, as well as that being a non-market based vesting condition, other non-market based vesting conditions are linked to maybe a growth in profit or in earnings per share. OK, so if that's the case, whether the employee needs to be there for a particular length of time, whether or not where we have to meet a target growth in profit or growth in earnings. The key bit there is that we account for those conditions at each reporting date. So we adjust for the changes in the employees. We adjust for any changes in growth or in any earnings per share within the calculations. OK. However, we then look at the opposite, which is your market based vesting conditions, and they are conditions related to the market price of the company's shares. So we're not talking about a growth in profit or a growth in earnings. We're talking about a growth in share price or the share price has to meet a predetermined target. Now, if there are market based vesting conditions, the treatment is very simple. We ignore them. Yeah, we do not talk about the market based vesting conditions until the vesting date arises. So even if we're one year, two years, three years into the scheme and we don't think that that vesting condition related to the market will materialize, we ignore it. Yeah. And the reason being is because that market based vesting condition is actually factored in to the fair value of the share based payment. So it has already been accounted for. So if there is a, a high likelihood of meeting the target, that will therefore, I would have thought, give rise to a higher fair value than if the likelihood is slim. If the likelihood is slim, then the fair value will be much less. You don't need to worry about the theory and the background there. All you need to identify is that if there is a market based vesting condition, we ignore that condition until the options actually vest. OK, so if it hasn't met the target share price, if it hasn't grown, by a particular percentage, then the options do not vest and we have to reverse everything out that we've done over the previous three or four years. OK, so if we have a look at the example. Uh, it says explain the accounting treatment in the financial statements for the year ended December 2015. Uh, here it says we have 5000. Share options. They're granted to five directors on the 1st of January 2015. So that's the start of this financial year. The share options will vest on the 31st of December 2017, so 15, 16, 17, that's three years, if the share price reaches $15. That is a vesting condition. That is related to the share price. So that is a market-based 
vest in condition, isn't it? Uh, the options will only vest and can then be exercised if the share price reaches $15. If it doesn't, it won't vest and we reverse everything out. It says the fair value of the option was $12 at the grant date. So that's what we would use, wouldn't it, to record the value of the option. Uh, it was there at $13 on December 2015. So we could ignore that, couldn't we? Because we're looking at share options, equity settled. So we take the fair value at the grant date and ignore everything else. And it says due to the fall in global stock market at the start of 2016, it is not anticipated that the share price will rise above its current price for the foreseeable future. So that market-based vesting condition at the end of the first year doesn't look like being met, does it? Doesn't matter. We ignore it. Yeah, it doesn't matter that the likelihood of it rising is slim. Yeah, we do not make any adjustments for it. We just go through and account for the non-market-based vesting condition as standard. And by that, what do we mean? Well, we have there to work out the fair value in full. Was it 5,000 options? The fair value at the grant date was there as 12. The number of employees or directors was there as 5. And none of them were anticipated to leave. Okay. So tapping that into your calculator. That means the fair value at the end of the first year in full is $100,000. That is what would appear on the statement of financial position. And if you like journal entries, then you debit your statement of profit or loss with the expense of 100000 and you credit your equity as shares to be issued through your other components of equity as 100,000, okay? You do not consider the fact that we do not anticipate the share rising to the $15 by the end of the three years because it is already incorporated in that $12 fair value. That's it. So it's just a little trick, isn't it? Something that the examiner has up their sleeve to try and confuse you. If you're given market-based vesting conditions, ignore them unless you are at the vesting dates. If it's there and you've not met them, then you reverse out all of the entries that you have previously processed. Other than that, there's just a tiny little bit for you to go through there and read isn't there to do with the scope of IFRS 2. So when we do not need to use IFRS 2, but I'll allow you to go through there and read that up in your own time and have a read of what's in the textbook of your choosing. And then you can go through there and start playing around with the numbers. Share-based payments, it's a new bit of P2, isn't it? Uh, it's not been there in F7 or anything within F3, but I think it's perfectly manageable. Other than that, I'll go through there and see you when we arrive at the next topic. And I'll see you all then. Take care.